Hi, my name is Kirsten Schnell. I'm a fourth grade teacher in Northern Colorado, and this is the Crazy Cat Classroom. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding the notification bell so that you are notified every single time I upload a new video. If you like this video at the end, give it a thumbs up. That just helps my video reach more teachers. So let's get started. If you watched my teacher journey YouTube video, which will be a link right up there, you know that my very first year of teaching, I was a sixth grade English teacher. And this previous year, I was a fourth grade teacher. And so I thought that it would be a fun video to compare and contrast the two and tell you guys which one I personally prefer. So if you haven't seen that video, um, I came in late to the teaching game. I didn't start teaching until I was 27 years old, which felt old compared to some of the 23 year olds that I started with. So I definitely felt a little bit of a fish out of water. However, I do feel that my life experience helped me gain some perspective in my teaching profession before I went into teaching. I really wanted to do this video outside like I did that video, however, it's hard to tell, but it is very windy and rainy out and our mountains are getting snow right now and there is a possibility of us getting snow. There was so much hail last night that it was exhausting, it was hard to sleep. So reason why I am filming inside today in my little reading nook. Anywho, so let's get started. My very first year of being a teacher, I was a sixth grade English teacher. And before that, I had student taught and co-taught in a fourth grade classroom. And I really felt that fourth grade was where my interest was at. However, if you understand the teaching realm, um, some teachers can be very picky, right? They can be very picky in the school district and the school and the age that they teach. However, sometimes you can't because coming out of college, you just need a job. And so I accepted a sixth grade English teacher position in a local middle school in the school district that I wanted to work in, which was a phenomenal experience. I got to teach with some of the most amazing teachers I have ever met in my entire life. And I really honed that experience as something that definitely grew me as a teacher. Now, sixth grade. So in our middle school, we had like A day, B day, or every other day. Um, we called it purple and teal. And as a sixth grade English teacher, I got to see my students every single day versus if I was an art teacher, let's say, I would only see my kids every other day. So I was fortunate enough to at least be able to see my kids every single day. However, I only got to see them for 65 minutes, which was very hard to get used to. So I had first period, I had second period planning, third period, and then we had a fifth period because our fourth period was kind of in our third period class because it was PE. Um, it was just how the school was able to deal with the schedule. So really I only had three classes for English and then I had a homeroom class. I had, well, I had the same kids for English all year long, which is also a very nice thing. However, my homeroom students, I had them for a whole semester, and then the second semester, I had them every other day. So I'll get into that. All right, so sixth grade. I wanna start off with the positives. One, they are more mature, meaning that you can have deeper conversations with them that you might not be able to have with fourth graders. Two, they are more technologically savvy, 
meaning that if I had a technological tool for them to use, they were most likely able to use it and use it well. Third, they were used to the writers and readers workshop since that was something that they did in elementary school and that we continued into the middle school level. And fourthly, I was able to make some really good connections with some of my students. It wasn't that long ago that I was in their shoes and I felt like I could really relate to some of the issues that were happening in their lives. So creating relationships with some students was really, really positive. Now for the negative side. One, that they've been in school for almost six years and if they haven't had a positive interaction with school now they probably aren't going to have it and that was really hard because my students who are not intrinsically motivated being an intrinsically motivated person it was difficult to try to build them up try to make them believe in themselves um, and being able to actually get the work done. The second thing is that hormones are real and all of a sudden I had so many kids do disrespectful things that I don't know if they realized were disrespectful, but as a first year teacher, it was very um, destructive towards my ego in the sense of me being the teacher and then being the student. Thirdly, in a 65 minute class period, though I did build relationships with some students, it was very difficult to build relationships because you only had 65 minutes. And so I would talk to some of them in the hallway. I would really try to cultivate those relationships, but it was difficult. I would say, and this kind of correlates with the fourth negative, I would say that my class that I had the least amount of kids, which was my first period class, I was able to cultivate a lot more relationships because it was a short amount of time and I had less students versus in my fifth hour, I had 36 students and that was just a lot more difficult and I had a little bit more needs in that class. So trying to fit the needs of all the students as well as cultivating relationships was very difficult. So I would say that that would be my fourth, that the class sizes vary. So I had 20 students, 30 students, and 36 students. So those are some of the negatives of teaching middle school or teaching sixth grade. Now I want to talk about fourth grade. After this year was my first year on my own teaching fourth grade. I'm going to start with the positives. One, the fourth graders tend to be more intrinsically motivated, not all the time, but because they definitely view you as an adult, they definitely view you as an authoritative figure, they are more willing to do what you ask, just from my experience. Two, they still like school. So even if they come to school and tell you, oh, I don't like school, I don't want to be here, they still like school because either you're making it fun or they see their friends. They're not to that point, which they tend to get when they enter middle school, where they've had so many years of bad year after bad year that you're still able to possibly grab them and have them believe in themselves, have that courage that though they may struggle, that they're growing and that they can succeed. And so I really found that in fourth grade, I was able to change the mindset a lot easier than with my sixth graders. Thirdly, you have a full day with your fourth graders. Now at my school, I do have my fourth graders all day long, you were able to build a classroom culture and a community based off of respect, based off of being a family, and you were really able to cultivate those relationships. So having your students all day long or most of the day is such an important outlook that I feel like elementary school teachers don't view as 
something of a positive. Yeah, you might have that difficult student, but if you had that difficult student for only 65 minutes a day, and you tried hard to cultivate that relationship with them, but they're in your 36 student class and you have other needs to be met, it is so difficult. Versus if you had that student every single day for seven hours of that day, six to seven hours of the day, and you had only, let's say 26 students, and yeah, there were other needs, but you were able to cultivate that relationship with that student, it's such a shift. We would be able to communicate over a area of respect and knowing each other and having to get along because we're in this together. Versus in a 65 minute period, they're like, I'm not gonna see you within an hour. So why should I care? Some negatives with fourth grade would be that they are not as technologically savvy. So it takes them a really long time to try to understand technology and get to where you need to go. They will need lots of reminders and lots of login help, especially when something's new. Secondly, they are building their independent skills. So in K through third, there has been a lot of hand-holding and that's okay because they're in those ages where there's hand-holding is expected. However, when they transition into fourth grade, the hands kind of come off and I know that I know where they're supposed to be when they reach sixth grade and I'm thinking in my head, how can I help them get there? And so they're a little bit wary when it comes to independent work and it's very difficult because they're so used to that handhold that when they come into fourth grade and you're trying to give them this independence and trying to have them have this voice, they're very reluctant at first. They just start really believing in themselves and being able to see that they have a voice. That being said, the third negative thing is the conversations that you could possibly have with sixth graders, though they're only a few years apart, may not be the most appropriate for nine-year-olds or 10-year-olds, especially towards the beginning of the year, which is very difficult when you go from sixth grade to fourth grade because you're used to those mature and possibly really difficult conversations. And not that you can't have those as a fourth grader, but there are certain things that obviously are going to go over their head that a sixth grader will have the background knowledge of like, oh, I understand why this is wrong. The fourth negative would be you're not able to influence as many students. So when I was a sixth grade teacher, I had 90 students. And when I was a fourth grade teacher, I only had 26. And though I got to see the other fourth graders through parent pickup and things like that, and I really tried cultivating relationships with students that were not in my class through parent pickup, through just seeing them in the hall and letting them know that I care about them even though I'm not their teacher, I felt that I was able to touch the lives of more students when I was a sixth grade teacher. So, all that being said, which grade do I prefer? Well, I personally believe that I am 100% an elementary school teacher. Now, don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed sixth grade. I really enjoyed the team that I worked with. They were phenomenal. I enjoyed the ability of the mature conversations and the ownership that a lot of the students took on themselves and the fact that I could relinquish some of that responsibility off of myself and onto them very easily, very smoothly and quickly. However, I think for me personally, the biggest thing is cultivating that classroom culture and building relationships with students and it is easier for me to do that at the elementary school level rather than the middle school level. 
And not saying that that's not possible because given I was a first year teacher when I was a sixth grade teacher and I was a second year teacher when I was a fourth grade teacher and the knowledge difference between my first year and my second year was a big growth. However, I just feel that I am more able to cultivate relationships when I see them every single day for six to seven hours of the day. That being said, I worked with amazing people who were able to cultivate relationships, who were able to really build a classroom community and culture in their classes being a sixth grade English teacher. I really feel like middle school gets a bad rap and people say that we're crazy for liking middle school, but I think that they're an amazing age where you can really influence them before they get into high school. So overall, which one do I prefer? I prefer fourth grade. And that may not be a surprise, but I did enjoy sixth grade while I taught it. And if you're one of my old sixth graders, which I know some of you watch my YouTube channel, I am so blessed to have met you and to have had you in my class because you all grew me in ways that were unbelievable. And if you are one of my fourth graders and you are watching, because I know some of you watch my channel, I am so thankful for the year that we had, even though it was crazy and different, but you guys really, you guys really just made me love teaching and I loved teaching you. That's it for me. As I said at the beginning, make sure you subscribe, ding that notification bell. If you liked this video and would like to see more of my videos, hit that like button. If you are a teacher and you have a grade that you prefer, write that in the comment box down below. I would love to know. And I would love to know why you love the grade that you teach. Or maybe you don't love the grade that you teach and you love a different grade that you've taught in the past. I would just love to hear from you and I would love to communicate with you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Remember, when you believe in yourself, you can change the world. See ya!